How's it going, everyone? Uh, Colin Monroe. I'm volunteer assistant coach at Providence College. Graduated from Georgetown University last year. Um, welcome back to the virtual cross summit. This is the second presentation of the day. Earlier, we had goalie Owen McElroy talking about baiting shooters. Um, later tonight, we have assistant coach at Harvard, Will Corgan, on talking about face off and wood play. Um, for right now, we had Dane Doby, this is a pre-recorded session. We did it, um, I think, last Friday is when we recorded this uh, for this time slot. Super awesome presentation. Dane and I played together um, this summer uh, playing for the Langley Thunder, um, and we kind of went through a game breakdown of the Man Cup. Um, this guy's unbelievable. Um, I got another intro um, in the video once I go to share my screen and record, but I hope you guys enjoy this presentation. It's uh, pretty unbelievable what this guy's able to do. So I'll be back. Um, I'm going to turn my, turn my video off, but I'll be back uh, at the end to, answer, to help answer some questions if you guys want. Um, use the, I would use the Q&A aspect instead of the chat. I think that'll work better. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and uh, let the recording of myself and Dane uh, run here. How's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Virtual Cross Summit. Colin Monroe here with... Uh, Dane Dolby, and we're going to kind of go through some clips from the Man Cup. But first, quick introduction on Dane. Um, he's a two-time NLL champion, former Minto Cup champion, um, NLL MVP, and then has also led the NLL in both points and goals in different seasons. So it's pretty impressive. Welcome, Dane. Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> Happy to have you on here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen, and let's get this started. You good to see that? Yeah, got her. Awesome. So first clip here. Yeah, this one is, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I kind of just carrying the ball and, you know, see Rob was doing all the work and Connor Robinson there was doing all the work and uh, just trying to find her two man game and, Eventually, it did uh, open up when they did double low when I tried to go to the net there. Um, luckily enough, I was able to get a pass off, but uh, um, they were sending help real quick. So, um, yeah, I just draw both guys low, and and uh, hopefully Connor had a step-down shot, which, uh, you know, the timing wasn't quite there because of the slide came, but uh, I think we did have a good lock off of it. Yeah, so one thing I'll say, were you uh... – trying to get because I see this little backhand pump right there were you trying to get yourself into the net or were you kind of trying to draw both guys low knowing that Connor was going to be open yeah 100 percent. I'm trying to freeze that bottom defender there um so I can get underneath them so it, I had the one guy on my back there and uh, I'm trying to throw that pump fake to, to see if I can freeze or, or bite that bottom defender so he comes up a bit so I can get underneath uh my first look was to go to the net um and then I knew Connor was sitting with about a 10 to 15 foot shot if yeah. uh if that wasn't the yeah, he's a pretty good shooter, so we'll take that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, moving on here. A little power play action. Yeah, it's pretty so basic. One, yeah, Go ahead. I remember I remember uh when I first got playing that low spot, you said if you ever see that guy kind of fly up, you gotta make sure to cut. So are you just kind of reading this low guy here or what are what are you looking at? Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I, I know they're I know they're uh, playing Curtis up top, um, really, really strong because he's a big threat. So um, I'm trying to get that crease guy to leave the leave his heels off the back of the crease so uh, Connor can get underneath. I think it's Connor on this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to get his uh, his heels off off the crease and, and get him to play me a bit. And I know if uh, I can get him there, I can throw it to an area and Connor can grab it and get get in front of the net for. That's probably a great A shot for us. I'd rather have him shoot that from there than I shoot it from up top. So um, anytime I can get that defender off the crease and be able to flip that down there, that's that's the look uh, That's the look we're looking for. Yeah, no doubt. We'll take down the power play every time. So this one, I'm kind of curious. I know, I know you love kind of spinning, going underneath. You ever kind of fake going underneath, where you're just kind of spinning, knowing you're not going to get it, and you can come back and get your top side, or, or you look in and he. Um, yeah, sometimes I guess, but more so, more so than not, I'm just looking for that uh, that 
that one step. Um, I'm usually trying to get underneath that stick or underneath that elbow so I can get uh, right across the front of the net. But uh, a lot of defenders are bigger, bigger and stronger right now, and um, they're not giving that up. So um, eventually they double my face, and I'm able to get it up to chase there um, for, for a shot. I probably held the ball a little too long in this shift, but uh, able to get a good look off of it. Yeah, that's the way she goes. I think we're going to go ahead and skip this one. Yeah, this one's pretty sweet. So I think first, uh, if you want to start with Kinnear pick, Kinnear's pick, because I know this is a pick that a lot of NLL teams are kind of going to, and it's a, it's a good look where you kind of start on the back and then flip to get top side. So if you want to kind of dive into that, we'll go from there. Yeah, most definitely. So it's, uh, you know, if I, if, I, if I get this defender's hips turned uh, the proper way, so his hips are turned now, um, and that's when, uh, that's when Kinnear can find that back. And right when he finds that back, I can get so back right over there top. is what you're saying, right? So right, one more clip a little bit further, right there. Okay. So right there, that defender's hips are turned. Uh, Dylan can uh, push him to the push him to the corner on his back. I get back over top, and and he should be wide open. So um, Dylan makes a heck of a play. He's strong as an ox. So uh, yeah. I know he's gonna get. I know he's gonna be able to get those picks in. And uh, he was very, very, very good at it, and very good at getting himself and myself open. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is just uh, I credit this a lot to lot to the picker. Um, I was able to get back over um, based off Dylan's pick, but uh, I knew he was wide open on it. Yeah, and then how about this feed? This feed is pretty ridiculous. Um, first of all, like, do you work on it a bunch? And second of all, is it just kind of for the angle so you can get around him, give Kinnear a bit of a better angle uh, to catch it and see it, or? Or what were you kind of thinking on that? Or did it just kind of happened. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's rewatch it. I didn't even pay it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the one. Uh, yeah, one was, yeah, that's the whole. Uh, that's the whole. Throw it to an area. Um, let yeah. Dylan run onto it. So, um, yeah, I guess I work on it. Maybe it's just because I'm older. I've been doing it a lot, yeah. and I'm confident in just throwing it to space. But uh, it's something where I had to get it through that defender and had to get it to an area where Dylan was able to catch it in front of him and get a good shot off. So yeah. I've I've honestly never seen a feed like that before. That was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and Kinnear, great job getting across, catching it, getting off real quick. That was awesome. Hundred percent. Reach around, go far side. Yep. This one, this this feed by Curtis is pretty sick. How he's kind of looked it off the whole way. But my question for you on this one is like, are you? knowing that he's going far side or are you reading that he's on an or knowing that you want to go far side or are you reading that he's down on a knee already and just kind of seeing what he does or are you kind of trying to get him off so you can reach yeah my my first shot usually off a of swing is I, I i like to shoot far side high and i believe that defender's like heads right there so yeah. i have to i'm hesitating peter Rule did a fantastic job of blocking shots so yeah. um eventually i was able to he kept creeping over and keep sliding over and it just had to wait out uh Wait out the defender and uh, wait out Vino a little bit there because, uh, you know, he's tough to beat. So um, eventually it opened up and I was able to get that uh, quick shot off. And, you know, Curtis made a great play and it was it was just open for the shot. It sh I shouldn't miss those. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, they did do a good job getting lanes. There's a couple clips later where you see like three, four guys running out of you. But... Mm. Yeah, this one's pretty sick, too. I think this one might be my favorite one on the whole video, just the way you kind of keep hesitating and get people off balance the whole time. Um, were you kind of looking for Kinnear the whole way? or? Yeah, you know, I thought Kinnear was there first, and then we had a three-man lefty, so C-Rob was kind of kind of in the mix there, too. And then I think Connor eventually got me over top. Um, yeah. And I still I still believe that uh, Kinnear was still open. So, uh I was able to get over top. I wound up to shoot, and I think at the last second, my eyes seen him. So um, I was coming over to shoot that ball 100%, and uh, I was able to uh, quickly realize that Dylan was wide open on the back door. So um, he he works hard to get open off ball and and on ball, and he was uh, you know he, he was there. So get on the ball because he could put the ball in the net. But yeah. um, credit to like like I said, credit to Dylan getting there, and then C Rob getting me over top, and um, it, it all broke down from there. Yeah. And what about uh, just your hesitations and stuff for you? Are you knowing this, that they're going to take bad angles at you if you keep faking? Is that what you're looking for? Are you trying to keep the goalie off balance or what are you, what are you 
faking the lights out for basically yeah the, i think the big one with my with specifically my game is i'm smaller and slower than most mostly <laughs> everybody so it's 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 trying to find that specific edge or specific advantage and, and then it's usually off a of hesitation where i can try and freeze a defender um freeze a f defender in his bad stance and uh um, hopefully get that extra step um, that I really need um, to get open. So, yeah, it's mostly just freezing guys, opening backs for, for guys to find backs. But, um, yeah, I was that's kind of how that one broke down. Yeah. Curtis is uh, pretty mind-blowing at the bottom of the screen here on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think he's happy that Dylan scored a backdoor goal. Yeah, I know. First one of the year, I told him after that. He's like, no, it was. I'm like, yeah, it was. I'm pretty sure. Not in practice or anything. <laughs> no. Just kind of shot. Were you kind of selling far side and pulled it back, or just kind of? Uh, the big one there is the big one there is if you replay it there, it's uh, the first look is off ball. Um, yeah. I think Curtis got blown up through a pick and roll where he was yeah. setting an up pick off ball, and that was the that was the first look on this play is Curtis going through the middle on an up pick and roll. Um, that broke down, so Connor came in and, and sealed my guy, and they they I consider that a bad gap, and I was able to yeah. uh, able to get a quick shot off that uh, you know that beat that beat him. Yeah. This one I know a lot a lot of times throughout the series, Vino is pretty good about getting across and taking away our one timers near side. So were you just kind of trying to push it back against the grains so and he was getting across quick, or is that where you like to go yeah. with one timers in general or kind of Yeah, like it, it, with Curtis there, he, he really sold it. So he's looking yeah. at Robert, looking at Churchy up top there, and then and then I opened up a lane for me. Um, I knew Curtis and I think Vino knew Curtis wasn't a threat to shoot there. So if you see him, he's stick, standing right on his line. Yeah. Um, so it's easy for him to get across there. I think um, his momentum coming across to me to reach back far side, there's no way he can get back there. Um, yeah. So when he reach, when he's coming, his momentum coming towards me, I got to go back far side on that. Yeah. So um, there's no hesitation. That's where I was going from the start. Yeah. It's really interesting how you kind of knew that was going to happen before just because of Curtis's posture and knowing that he wasn't really good looking to shoot himself. Yeah, I know a three, a three on two, Curtis isn't taking a step down there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Matt and Nett there, he knows sure enough that uh, with, the, with, with the guys that were going out there that uh, we're going to try and get a shot right on top of him. So yeah. he, he was uh, heels on the goal line on that yeah. one. Yeah. Seems like he was that way the whole series. Mm-hmm. Nice, just this is another simple little pick and roll here. Um, another one hand feed, but I assume just again angle, getting around it, putting it into space. Yeah, I think that's Gil right there. He's a big, big body. I had to get around him, um, and and same same idea as Dylan's getting wide open, and I have to throw a ball to space. And um, one of the I guess the something that I have in my bag is is get it around the defender rather than get it over him. So. I was able to get that, that that pass off around him. Yeah, awesome. A little power play again. So again, are you trying to step in and try to get his heels off the goal line so you can throw it down? Or are you really looking for your own shot here? Or? Kind of the first part. Yeah, the so the, my initial my my initial look is my own shot for sure. Yeah. And you know, I after replaying this a little bit, um, you know, Connor is there. Um, their far righty crease guy is playing top of the crease there, so yeah. he's he is a quick He's's slide. Yeah. Um, Robert Hope played a great lane, so I had to pull that out and give it back to give it back to Curtis. Um, and then it all broke down from there when he goes when when you get a skip pass in there, we got two skips. So yeah. um, it went Curtis to to mass and then and then up to me so it was it was uh it was great great ball movement and yeah. all i had to do was finish finish the shot off yeah that was a good looking power player there pimmer was happy with that one <laughs> i bet as long as you're running on the floor right <laughs> yeah that's right that's similar to the last one we'll kind of just move on here
good job by Connor drawing two there low, kind of like you did on that first clip. Um, how about the shot? It looks like you found your screen and were you trying to sell far side and pull it back or just kind of shooting around the screen? Or I don't even know where that went. I think it went far side, did it not? It? I thought it came back short, but I could be wrong. Oh, maybe it did go far. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it bounced far side. Um, yeah, Connor, exact same, very similar to one of the first clips you showed yeah. where they draw the double down low, run in the alley there, let, let them double, yeah. be able to flip it out. They did have a slide guy pretty quick. Um, I, I was able to wait them out and get around them. Um, yeah. yeah, like I was about, really trying to shoot from. How about letting them on. through this pick right here at the beginning? Did you kind of see that they're going to double low and that's why you kind of let them through and didn't set it? Or were you looking to pick over top? Or do you not? Yeah, I like right there. I'm looking to pick over top, yeah. but at the same time, once they start, once Connor attacks with speed, they have to go. And yeah. uh, you know, he he was uh, had enough speed and has, has enough talent to to be able to realize that and pull it out and yeah. uh, you know look for better. And I was able to get uh, get open there off of that. And you know, like I said, it's that's just uh, Connor drawing a double and and being able to flip it back up and, yeah. and me being able to get a shot off. So this is short man. We ended up, we actually scored a lot of short man goals kind of throughout the whole year. What uh, a little different on this one that we're doing. Did you just kind of read his hips, which decided to set a pick? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if you, if you rewind a little bit, I'm trying to come and set that in a perfect world. I'm trying to set an up pick. So yeah. I want his, I want to set an up pick, but that defender, I call it East West um, East West feet. So his feet are, are facing the boards. So it's harder to get a, a up pick on his back. So yeah. This way I got Connor over top, um, was able to find this guy's back. Connor attacks the net, so it draws that that guy for a split second and leaves me yeah. open on top of the net. Um, we did it quite a, quite a lot. It was, it was just reading the defenders on if we if we got that up pick or we got that side kind of deal um, to get over top. But it was open quite a bit, and we've had, we had some success on that during that series. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, also, I've kind of noticed just watching you play all year and you didn't do it quite as much on this, but there's times where you catch the ball inside and you're like totally choked up. Does that kind of protect your hands? Do you find it makes your hands quicker when you go to finish or it takes away your ability to reach or what do you kind of, what are you thinking when you choke way up on your stick on those kind of inside? Yeah. My, yeah. I've always, I've always done it. And I always preach that to, to kids as well. Like I'm, if I'm playing inside, I, I'm choking up and I'm putting my, my stick on my shoulder realistically. And uh, if I hang my stick, it's usually getting hit or I'm not getting a shot off. Um, I don't think when you're in that close, it's, if you notice, I really try and release the ball really quick um, yeah. inside and maybe get one pump fake in and be able to release it really quick. Cause you don't have time um, with this, with, with all these defenders on top of you. So um, I really like having my stick choked up when I'm, when I'm pick and rolling, when I'm inside, when I'm getting it from a, a pick and roll from the righties. So yeah. um, that's something you'll probably notice a lot. Like you already, you already mentioned. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I'm sure I think we're going to talk about it on a later clip here, but I just think it's the your angle of your backhands. We don't have to go into it now, but just the way you kind of get it parallel to give yourself more angle. Um, yeah, try and release it off my hip. Yeah. There's a clip later where you go like it's it's a backhand, but it almost looks like you all the way turn around and shovel it back, but we'll get there in a minute. Kinnear banging bodies. Oh, that was the double OT. Yeah, that was. Oh, yeah, I just noticed that, yeah. Yeah, this... Talk us through this one. This one, I know you knew exactly what you're doing on this one. Yeah, this one, like, there's a point where, um, you know, I held the ball a long time. Um, and realistically, that's not the best thing to do, but... You know, Dylan was banging around and, and finding opportunities and, and the hesitations to get back over or go underneath a few times. Um, eventually was able to get them to be off balance or, or cheat up a little bit. But at the very end of this play, if you watch Dylan kind of hold his guy and let me get underneath, that's yeah. that's the deciding factor on this. I think it was yeah. Robert Holt. If you, if you watch right here, I think he holds He's on the He's giving him a couple. yank, yep. Yeah. Gives you one extra gave, second. That just gave me that extra step. Yeah. Um, to get underneath that so um 
not many people recognize that stuff, but uh, I definitely uh, definitely noticed it to, to be able to get there. So Dylan does a great job at that, and I was no just doubt. able to wait Paul Dawson and get underneath him. Yeah, no doubt. And you can hang on to the ball a little longer when it's double OT and everyone's about to throw up from being too gassed and you know, just go make a play. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly it. Watch it one more time. Another short man, another short man play here. Um, you kind of do the same finish, but what are you reading? Are you looking at the switch? Are you kind of anticipating you're going to be able to get through it? Or So here I know Connor's coming to blow this guy up. I know yeah. he's going to hammer him. So then I know I'm playing a one-on-one. Um, I immediately realize that that uh, that defender's playing me topside, hard topside, and trying to force me back down. Yeah. Um, if I this is a, so This is an area where I choked up for sure when yeah. I had the ball. Um, I was able to get inside um, off just a, just a quick spin because I knew there was no help coming because uh, Connor did his thing. Um, and that's when I was able to get that shot. Probably shouldn't have thrown the maybe backhander there, but yeah. um, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, just trying to get to the front of the net at all costs is, is really what I'm, what I'm looking for. No doubt. And just kind of reading the switch guy and trying to, yeah, get to the middle. Yeah. He's playing me top side. I got underneath – yeah, Connor does a good job here, kind of sealing his guy off too after he picks him, yeah. not letting him help. Right. <clears throat> nice little cross pick by Chase. Yeah, that's just that's just the benches there, and you know, Chase, we're running we're running a quick two on one. He had two options: is try to get underneath that defender coming off the bench, so I can get him a pass, or he was able to to seal that guy, and I was able to drive underneath it and get a get a nice get a nice reach on uh, on Vino, to yeah. be able to drop the ball at his at his feet. So real quick, we've kind of just kind of side note here: we've watched you kind of finish um, on on Vino the whole time, but how does it uh, differ playing goalie in a series and watching how you have to change up your shots and how you have to change up kind of what you're doing and how you approach shooting however 10 times a night on the same goalie um, for seven games in a row? Yeah, like um, I've played against Matt for a long time. Yeah. Uh, like, and, he, and he's been, you know – the best goalie in the league for years and, and one goalie of the year and holds all the records. He's probably the best goalie of all time. And um, the thing I used to, I used to hesitate um, against him a lot and hesitate against goalies quite, quite frequently. Um, but the big one I believe is, is, is mixing up your shots and being able to shoot all over the net. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is be able to shoot all corners at all times from all different angles, um, either overhand side, arm underhand. Um, you notice a lot, I'm probably going far side hip. I shoot a lot far side. Um, I really don't like pulling the ball that much short side, but um, I, the quick release and, and getting it back far side is, is my go-to. Um, but like I said, it, it's just mixing it up and, and yeah. not being, not being predictable um, is, is the big one that, uh, you know, I recommend to anybody on, it doesn't matter if you're seeing a goalie for the first time or, or not. Cause once you beat them one place, a good goalie is probably not going to yeah. let you beat them there again. No doubt. And what about, do you ever set up, set them up? So you kind of give them a couple short sides knowing that you might bait and you can get them far side or you just kind of mix it up and not worry. about that. Yeah, I, I, I don't like giving away shots. Um, I will shoot uh, specific locations maybe yeah. early. Um, to get his mind thinking I'm going there, I guess. Um, or know when I came back that I, I've shot a few times there, I need to pull a ball or I need yeah. to do this next time and, and see what I can. But um, yeah, it's it's all perception, I guess. It's a bit of a mind game. But at the end of the day, when I'm going in there, I'm just I'm just trying to shoot my shot as best I can. And, and hopefully my shot beats beats where he's, how fast he's going to move to it. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Um. Another one, Kinnear just getting right across the middle. Yeah, that's so another one where we 
it's another one where we turned his hips. Uh, yeah. um, his hips are turned there. We got him on the back, was able to get over. And then there's Dill, Dill making a great catch in traffic yeah. and, and finishing again. So, yeah. Yeah, it's... One thing I've noticed on all these is Kinnear just getting it and immediately diving. Like as soon as he catches it, he's diving. It's right out of his stick. He plays with pretty shallow pocket, quick release, and he can just get that ball out so quick. Yeah, one thing I don't recommend is holding on to the ball too long in that middle. Like yeah. you don't have much time. So he's uh, he's really good at it, getting catching it and getting it off. And and you know that's you're going to score more like that than holding on to the ball and, and uh, getting it either stripped or letting the goalie set up and have time. Yeah, no doubt. So this one, um, we pre you try to get his hips flipped again. He does a pretty good job rolling out of it better than they've done kind of the last couple. Um, what's kind of the next adjustment here? Are you just going to kind of take that gap and try to get your shot off in that gap or? Um... That's it. That's it. That's probably not a good, that's probably not a good shot. Um, especially I was looking at 30 there. That's probably, it's an okay shot late in the 30, but 22 seconds in, I, I don't, re I don't recommend that. My odds of scoring that goal aren't, aren't, aren't that good. Yeah. Um, but realistically in a perfect world, Dylan sets that up pick. Um, I think I have gap um, to be able to get a shot off, um, a valuable shot, and uh, that defender, that low defender, staying low and protecting protecting the crease, and I, and that's when I think I could uh, get my shot off. So yeah, I'm not. I don't recommend that right now on that specific time. But if I was able to open my hips and and be able to open my hips and, and take that step down yeah. shot, then that'd be a lot better of a shot. Yeah, no doubt. And it just kind of goes to show that. You can do the same thing over and over, and the D can just kind of spin out, play a little different. You got to kind of keep working at it, getting your uh, two man game, getting some space. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Every t every time is different. Yeah. That was a pretty ridiculous shot too. So, did you bounce that, or did it kind of hit his foot and bounce up? How'd that? Yeah, I think it, I think it was uh, just short side. I believe this was late. I think we're on a power play here, and it was real late. Connor had to go get the ball, um, oh, yeah. and we were real late in the thirty. And this is um, this is Dill just giving me space and me shooting around that defender. Yeah. <laughs> You look at the angle; it's not that good. Yeah. But um, I was able to. I think Vino left his bar a little bit, left his post, a, short side post a bit, and I was able to pull that short side. Yeah, no doubt. The screen definitely helps. And one other thing I want to kind of just talk about here, and um, this isn't like a big time bounce shot, but you you shot some bounce shots through the series. How does uh, shooting bounce shots, especially in the indoor game, kind of help get it under the glove or yeah, make the angle different? Because that's honestly something that a shot I don't shoot much. Um, but I would like to probably start getting, I probably should start getting in my repertoire. Yeah. I, sh I started shooting that. Um, it's more of a sidearm. Like it's like, a, it's not, a, I don't shoot overhound bound bounce shots. I'm more yeah. of a sidearm, um, sidearm uh, kind of bounce guy, but, and 99% of the time it's, it's supposed to go far side. So yeah. usually a goalie will, uh, and, and around the hip, not high. So yeah. usually goalie's going to drop and then he's going to drop into either a butterfly or his knee's going to collapse a bit and uh, be able to get him to that spot. When I first started shooting it, I was shooting it on probably, I was shooting it in junior on four by fours. So there really wasn't much room and you yeah. really had to, you really had to make sure you pick that spot. So that's where I kind of, began with that and uh you know some goalies i could beat on it, and some goalies you don't it doesn't look good because they're always there but um you know a lot of them a lot of them will tuck that knee in and you can and you can beat them far side hip no doubt and does it does it change whether it's a lefty righty in there or shooting glove side or kind of his free hand or yeah you know what i i haven't really i think most goalies when you wind up and you and you shoot you shoot the hips and uh, just above the knee to the hip, I think a lot of guys are going to have success. Uh, you know, if you pull it short side or you shoot it far side, a lot of that's a that's a tough spot for for those goalies to move. I think I definitely have the advantage um, with the uh, with Vino holding the stick in his right hand yeah. um, that I'm able to put it at his glove. And yeah. you know, a righty might be able to like he might drop that hand um, as a righty if uh, you know yeah. Curtis shoots a lot this series, just underhand short side. Um, right at that hip so that's where my shots were going to 
Awesome. That's Connor. Yeah. yeah. Connor, seems like Connor just does a pretty good job blowing up his guy and kind of giving you some space to get across. Yeah, this one, this one, it was kind of like a miss and they didn't switch. And I had a, I had a bit of a step on him. Um, he got a, he got a piece of him. Um, it was able to give me some room to get a shot off, but yeah, I'm inside the dotted line. Um, so like Connor drove his guy in, got a piece of yeah. my guy, maintained his own guy without a switch there. I believe I could have probably tucked it and kept going to the net, but I was able to pull up and get and get a and get a good shot off. Yeah, sweet. Give him a little shove after two. <laughs> yeah, we we're losing. I wasn't happy then. <laughs> that was change up the angle. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend this. <laughs> yeah, you put it back. You put it back uh, like towards churches. Like far yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, I went back towards Churchy. Not, I don't like, I don't 100 percent know where that's going. Um, yeah. At that point in the game, I think we're down 14, 11 with not much time left. Yeah. We have to get balls on that and and hope for some bounces. And, and the goalie's playing well. Sometimes you just gotta get it on that. Yeah, and, and you know I was lucky to get that off. So this is when you said uh, last time we watched the short man and you kind of picked him the other way. This is the up pick that you were talking about here. So that's right. And your hand. You know, like good. Yeah. And this, uh, I, pushed, <laughs> I pushed off with my hands there because I knew if I pushed, his chest was towards me. So I only yeah. used hands. Um, if I used my stick, he would have held my stick. So I had to use all hands and just push with two hands rather than rather than a cross-check motion. Yeah. And uh, this reminds me of Austin Matthews when he's like, so why do you go into the crossbar? And he's like, oh, I just saw it there and wanted to stick my face right through it. Yeah, this this one hurt. Yeah, it didn't look fun at all. <laughs> I was worried about it. This, is, this shot you love to shoot, um, the little twist. So just kind of talk to you kind of – twist the head of your stick or how do you kind of get that release on that type of shot yeah that one is uh like if you if you i pick and pop so the connor draws a two-man um i hesitate there defender goes to the lane look at vino he's on yeah. his knees because i hated sidearm yeah um once i hesitate sidearm and he goes down i i gotta pull it back short side i actually kind of missed i was supposed to go short side high there i think it went halfway up but yeah um luckily he was far enough out of the net that i was able to put it there but that's just a that's just a quick hesitation there to drop him to his knees and, oh, no. and get it back up over top of him. Yeah, is that the same shot you shoot uh, kind of to the far side that you all shoot, where you kind yeah, of? Yeah, that's that was the initial the initial the initial shot there was to go sidearm short or far side skipper really, yeah. um, and then uh, I seen uh, I think Hope there got in a really good lane, and I had to pull it back up, and by that time Vino was on his knees, so. Um, Luckily, you know, it, it's just mixing it up and able to get that shot off and, and be on all the score. Oh, that's – that's is that the same release that you're talking about? Because I think that was actually the one I was thinking of. So you don't, you don't have the little pump fake to get them low, but you just got a quick – quick high release and I don't know you kind of shot all summer you kind of shot that shot practice games warm up that's my that that yeah that's my favorite shot yeah. by a mile and Just, that's uh farsa you know a swing a swing across floor gets the goalie coming across and before the goalie is all the way across the ball's already in the far side net yeah. um, top corner so um stick high catch stick high and, and release quick it's yeah. That's the big one with though the I like it's really not about power at that point. It's it's about how fast you can get it off and and put it to that area where it needs to go. Yeah, awesome. So that was we kind of see it later on. You talked about how good of a job they did all series long of kind of approaching you especially, but just kind of all our shooters. Um so yeah, seems like you just kind of drew them, drew all the guys in there. And approached this is similar to the power play, um, where you know Sweeting's down there on the on the crease, um, covering Dylan, um, and 
Connor sets a side seal. I'm able to come around that seal, um, wind up to shoot, and uh, Sweeney comes off the, brings his heels off the crease and comes to, comes to check me. And yeah. Dylan's wide open there, and you know he does a great play. Like if he just caught that and, and tried to jam it in there, it wouldn't go. So he 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 reached far side and brought it back short side. Was able yeah. to put it in. Yeah. Got across too. He's not afraid. <laughs> no, he sure ain't. So that's that's kind of the backhand one we were talking about before too, which is so impressive. Um, and did you did you always shoot your backhands that way, or you just find that you get more angled doing it? And I've I since I started watching you do it, I've kind of tried to get it. It's a tough shot to hit, and I'm sure it's taken thousands of reps to kind of dial it in. But what's what's yeah, your yeah like that one's a bit uh, yeah. So I think when I catch the ball there. Um, Matt's already crossed the net. I have to, uh, I have to get it back short side. Yeah. I can't do it overhand. Um, I do a lot of it when I'm coming up off the crease um, and trying to get around over top, and then we'll throw it off my hip um, from a different angle and try and beat him short side. And yeah. um, he's not one of those goalies that you usually can beat on it. He usually doesn't leave his short side post, but uh, there is certain goalies that can be beat on it. But yeah. um, this one is, uh, I knew short side was there. Um, I had to get it to short side as quick as I can. And that was uh, kind of a turn and fire. And um, I knew where the net was. Did I know exactly where the yeah. ball was going? No, I just need to try and put it to a location. Yeah. Kinnear, I was talking to him the other day. He said he thought you were faking on this one. I don't know how he, said <laughs> <laughs> he told me the other night. Because that was another shorthanded kind of same look. Just shooting around a screen. Yeah. I pulled that one. Yeah. And that that's them doing a great job approaching again. You just didn't have any help low and just kind of luckily they jumped and you got it right through there. Yeah, shoot through legs, <laughs> shoot through legs. And, you know, the initial play broke down. Um, yeah. I was supposed to set an up, pick and roll and, and go to the net, and they played good D on it. And, yeah. and Curtis was able to, uh, you know, bring a lot of the guys down low and, and swing it up there, and I was able to get a time for a step yeah. down. And it's not necessarily uh, – you got to put your stick angle at the right spots, um, you know, to try and get around these guys. These guys yeah. are big guys to try and shoot around. So um, that's just through the legs, it looks like to me. Yeah. It's not too often you get four guys flying out at shooters. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that was awesome, man. Thanks for coming on. It was great having you, and uh, I'm sure we'll chat soon. No problem, man. I appreciate it. Yep. All right. See you later. Beauty. See ya. Yeah, I hope you all um, enjoyed that talk. It was awesome. Um, I know Dane's not here for questions, but uh, if anyone has anything, I can probably help out. Um, we tend to see the game similarly. Uh, so yeah, I definitely don't have an every answer. That guy's pretty impressive. But uh, if anyone has anything, shoot me a message in Q&A in the next minute or so. If not, um, thanks for coming on. And hopefully uh, some of you can come on to the Will Corgan face-off and wing play presentation um, here in about an hour and 15 minutes. So. Give it about another 30 seconds, but it's looking like everyone's all set, so. Uh, so how's your game transition from field to box? Um, It's tough. Honestly, I played box for a long time, which uh, has really helped me out. I'd say the biggest thing as moving into the box game is my kind of ability to like scrap and fight for loose balls and ground balls and kind of anticipate what's going on. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the concepts are, are similar, but, but different. And a lot of the picking and stuff that I learned in box across definitely helps me translate to field across and just kind of the angles of how you pick. And he's talking about the defenseman's hips and how the offensive guys um, need to kind of find certain angles to, to get guys off and throw balls into space. So I'd say that would be the biggest thing for uh, how my game kind of translates out my game translating in. I think it's just like 
all the fundamental and toughness and all the stuff that comes in field across that you can kind of bring into the box game. Sweet. Well, that looks like it's it. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for coming on, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.